Hi and welcome to this video. Uh, we're exploring the scenario now in which we're going to enforce strong authentication uh, for a privileged user accessing a Windows system. We're going to enforce strong authentication uh, when they launch an application with privilege or when, when they launch a privileged desktop. Uh, there's several ways we can implement this, right? Uh, the, go the good thing is that uh, Windows machines support smart card authentication natively, right? So when you're deploying smart card authentication, uh, you can do it at the user level, right? So, uh, you know, there's uh, good and bad with this, right? If you do it at the user level, that means that everywhere you, your, your, your user is supposed to log in interactively or over RDP, uh, either there's got to be support for smart card or there's got to be a smart card reader, right? Um, you know, the, the benefits of this and the drawbacks should be uh, self-evident self here. There's another way to do this uh, in which you group systems, perhaps in an OU, and then you can set up the required smart card authentication uh, uh, GPO. The cool thing about this is that it allows you to group your, you know, finance, SOX, um, you know, HIPAA, PCI systems in, in a bucket of systems. And in, in order for people to access those systems, they need to be strongly authenticated. Um, so let's let's go through some uh, housekeeping here. Uh, we needed to make sure that f first and foremost that we have a template. Uh, I've actually made a copy of the smart card user template and I've called it smart card users v2, right? Uh, what is really important is that this template should be, uh, uh, you know, from a security perspective, you should have it limited to the users that you wanted to do it. In this case, I allowed read, enroll, and auto enroll to a, a group called Smart Card Users, and uh, my user Lisa belongs to that group. So if we look at the member of, she's a long member of those. I have yet to publish this uh, uh, template, so we're going to go ahead and publish it, and uh, we're going to. Uh, you know, use the YubiKey PIV manager to request the certificate. So I'm going to go back to my certificate authority. So uh, and let's see, let's take a look at this. We're going to go to certificate templates. We're going to uh, do a new certificate template to issue. And we're going to pick that smart card uh, logon version 2 that I created. So um, what's important here is that the template has a name and a display name. A lot of people, um, you know, the display name is not what you're going to be using in the YubiKey um, PIP Manager. So now I've launched YubiKey PIP Manager as Lisa Simpson already, and we're going to go to Certificates and we're going to uh, generate a new key. Notice that it's already using the um, the container name the, uh, of Lisa. Um, we're going to eliminate the spaces here. Right. And in this particular case, the way I set up this tem template, uh, the um, the user's email and their their um, uh, their u user principal name had to have to match. This doesn't have to be like this, but I'm just making my life very simple for other scenarios down the road. So we have um, a certification authority here. Uh, we're going to pick the one through RPC. And if everything uh, goes correctly, it's going to place Lisa certificate on my YubiKey. And, um, you know, we're going to be ready to start testing. And there you go. Uh, there's a certificate in there, right? It's uh, on the name of Lisa. And in the next uh, lab, we're going to talk about how to set up uh, the, the Centrify side, right? We're going to use Direct Authorize for Windows, and we're going to define a role that has an application and a desktop, and we'll see uh, how that works down the road, okay?